Every fighting game that comes out, comes out with a season pass that you gotta pay for. The only game that didn't do it was Melty Blood. Oh yeah, I know that's Grand Blue Versus, yep. $80 right off the bat. Yo, we are back today and look, people are saying right now, hey, fighting games are never gonna be popular. So we're gonna go ahead and check out this tweet uh, and look up the things that, why fighting games is never gonna be as popular like League of Legends and things like that. We're gonna go ahead and talk about a little bit of it and um, hope you guys get a good information and a good, you know, just good perspective out of it too. So make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, leave a like, let me know how you guys feel and let's jump into this video right now. All right guys. This is a pretty topic that a lot of people talk about. So I obviously want to explain like these things that are mentioned from you. I think fighting games are very unforgiving. It is like demoralizing unforgiving. Can you think about you playing a game and you just gotta sit there and watch them do the things that you are trying to do. It's very, very rough and demoralized. And sometimes the problem is with fighting games, is fighting games naturally uh, attract competitive nature players most of the time. Your goal is to try to beat the other opponent. Even though you may not be like a competitor, in your eyes and in your mind, you might think like, yeah, I'm just competitive. This is why I like things like this. The problem is if you play fighting game, it's very hard to enjoy the game at a certain level. To get to the point where the fighting games are always fun, you have to learn a lot, which goes to the second part, which is it does terrible at teaching you how to play. You just think like you just you just hit buttons, you mash buttons and things work. Fighting games doesn't really teach you how to play the game it just tells you to jump it tells you this is your life bar ex move this is the timer this is how you move the this is how you move your character it doesn't really like talk about much than it should actually fighting games are dying because optimal play actually makes them a single player experience for one player most games are like that but the problem is, is that usually when you play team games and things like that, there's someone to blame. And he's just like, oh my God, bro, if you're gonna keep playing like this dog, like we just never gonna win. Now, in fighting games, there's a certain point where people just be like, yo, this person is spamming. There's no reason to play this game because it's just nothing but spamming. You see how that's like easy way to like push yourself from like the situation rather than just being like, damn, I'm garbage. Nobody wants to admit that they're bad. The only people that admit that are bad are the people who just want to have fun. And the problem is with that is we don't have a place or a space in fighting game for those players to go, which is single player content. I don't know what happened, bro. I feel like the single player content has just been lacking drastically. Y'all remember Soul Calibur 3? You want to have something that is just fun for everybody. And I think the problem is, it's like they added the people who were going to be playing like, you know, who plays the game like die hard all the time. But then they start realizing like, yo, how about we make it appealing to everybody? And then that's where we go to the five step. Huge gap between casuals and pros. And when they, what they start doing, they start making games being a little bit more volatile than normal. And those are the most popular games right now. Or some of the most popular fighting games right now are mostly volatile games. And that's what makes people keep trying and playing because they have a chance. The problem is this shouldn't be the staple of a overall great fighting game package to kids stay popular. What Street Fighter is doing is adding like a single player mode that is separate from fighting. Adding a control scheme that is separate from the player. If you wanna play under your dynamic controls, you can. You can just hit buttons, have fun, do your stuff, and come back to it anytime you want. This should have been like a thing from here on out, but Street Fighter V was a huge failure in that. Arcade mode was pretty lame. Story mode was pretty lame. Them fighting herds did it too. I like them fighting herds servers. I think the lobby is like fantastic you know you just get with a bunch of people and you just play co-op have fun shit like that is what's going to keep people from playing because you're not stuck to just competing to one another you're just doing fun things hence why i thought strive was going to do a great thing too because you know the 2v2 mode right i was like oh this is really great but then i never came out so yeah we're kind of we're kind of just stuck on that Fighting games just need to be left alone. A balance can't exist. People are gonna mash no matter what, how complex it is control it. Just make the game your fans want to play. That's not necessarily true. I think there is a balance that you can make. Making more game modes for everyone is the is the proper way of moving forward to a lot of things rather than just dismiss a specific community. Like the problem is with KOF, right? KOF got a single player one-on-one -on -one mode. But the problem is with KOF is KOF is such a hard game to learn. So people are already discouraged to even play it. So it's just dead because not everybody's playing it. They didn't make it 
more encouraging to try it. They just gave it to him. And, and I love KOF, by the way. But I gotta, I gotta be honest with you. You know what I mean? Street Fighter Six has masked up, and then the cool part about it is, it's like everything is fun. That bowl where you're just literally fighting, a, like you're fighting, and then a random bull just comes in. Like you see modes like that, it's good. The thing is, they're not doing any game modes, and yet they're still charging full price. That's the problem. If you're gonna ditch single player, then they should go free to play, like other than focus multiplayer games. Facts. I agree with that. You're thinking as a consumer though, more game modes mean more dev time and risk. So they want to save probably and change the base gameplay as a whole to attract to attract the casual audience. That's my point though. Let's say for example they make the game easier. Casuals are gonna still have a harder time because the game is more easier now. So like the the people are just gonna even just get hit harder because we're all playing on an easier game. If a person never played a fighting game before, has to play somebody who's been playing fighting games for 20 years. Like a person that just don't know, never touched a video game fighting game ever in their life. They're not just gonna just cook, but it just made it worse for them because now it's easier just to beat them up and they die faster. Making games like that, like the gap close between casuals and pros, it really lowers the skill floor more than anything. What I do like that newer games are doing now is that it is encouraging people to give fighting games a try by making it accessible in that regard. But in terms of like that, the, 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 to, the skill gap to improve definitely takes a hit. That's why I said, just make a good game and people will come. You can make a good game, but you gotta also admit that Street Fighter had a lot of like single player content. It wasn't just fighting. It had like a decent amount of stuff at the time. And even then they had mechanics that were very accessible as well. But you know what else Vanilla Street Fighter 4 you had to do? You had to play the arcade mode to unlock characters, right? And then what happened eight months later? They made Super Street Fighter 4. And what did it add? Trial modes and new characters. Yeah, I think Street Fighter 6 did it perfectly. Open world story with all of the iconic characters and maybe characters that don't even, characters in the background. Last but not least, greedy DLC prices. Definitely is a killer too. Every fighting game that comes out, comes out with a season pass that you gotta pay for. The only game that didn't do it was Melty Blood. Oh yeah, I know that's Grand Blue Versus, yep. $80 right off the bat. This shit definitely is a killer. This is not it. What is greedy DLC practice? Imagine right now, Blaze Blue coming out, $70. Season pass, $40. You don't know what that season pass is. Characters and more. That's the type of business practice I'm talking about. The fact that you can't even practice against the characters that you don't have. I'm surprised they don't allow the characters to be available in training mode. Yeah, Multiverse will let you lab any character is really good. Yeah, that's nice. If I'm not mistaken, I think Dead or Alive did it too. If Street Fighter 6 came out with just arcade mode and literally just working, skill-based matchmaking and lobbies that were flawless from day one, people will still, that's not entirely true. I would say a small amount of people would buy it, yeah. But as a whole, definitely not. Because first of all, people don't even like skill-based matchmaking to begin with. That's the thing is I, I think the thing that makes it wrong is that you're speaking for a lot of people who literally don't want to do these things. They wanna have a nice experience and a good story. Skill-based bashing has always been a thing, not necessarily true. Drive was definitely the most popular fighting game for a long time and a lot of people have been playing it that game does not have skill-based matchmaking so can you define what skill-based matchmaking is for the skill the floors are skill-based matchmaking that is not true bro if it's skill-based matchmaking i shouldn't be able to be on 10 ever but they reset you by how much you play the game tower is literally who can have the long who can go on the win streak the longest that's not skill-based you can literally farm somebody how is that skill-based it's not about the no, that's not how skill bases work. Let me explain to you. It's supposed to separate new play, new layers from the from the better players and new players and shit like that. But that the problem is is that when you play somebody and you beat them multiple times, they rank up. That doesn't mean that you're there's a skill base. That's not skill base. And even before crossplay, you you randomly got tossed in a lobby. You don't even know the the, the playground is. It, it could be somebody that got knocked down from the lower rank. It's not in your opinion, it's just how it works. Celestial is literally not skill-based alone. You go up there and you literally could lose a thousand times and you're and you're still in Celestial. That makes no sense. You know how many players that are stuck in floor nine and floor 10 that supposed to be in Celestial, but guess what? They play against people who've been there for like whole year and they, they, they and, and you match up with people who've been there, done that. Like, how is that skill-based? Yeah, I think tower is not a bad idea, but it's not skill-based. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying the tower system is terrible. 
I mean, I think to a certain degree it's not great. And the only reason why it's not great is because of, you know, the infrastructure, how getting to like the highest rank work. But I think the idea and the concept is good, but it's not skill-based matchmaking. The way to fix these things is bringing more single player content for players while having the single player content i would say teach uh players how to understand the game not necessarily teach them how to play but un teach them to understand fighting games and um making a mode where it is forgiven and game solutions for these problems more game modes spread it out so people can just play in their own faction of the community is playing the problem is we don't got any of them so it's just hard because no one knows where to start. There's only a small percentage of people that's going to step up to the plate and learn. Not everybody is that 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 individual.